The year was 1848. He was 27 and she was 21. They had been married for two years. They learned they were expecting their second child when the Lord sent her a vision. After coming out of vision, I said to my husband, I have a message for you. You must begin to print a little paper and send it out to the people. Let it be small at first. But as the people read, they will send you means with which to print. And it will be a success from the first. From this small beginning, it was shown to me to be like streams of light that went clear round the world. James and Ellen White let faith override doubt and listen to the Lord's leading. In 1849, they started publishing a little paper. They didn't have much, and it was not always easy. To get the paper out, James often walked eight miles on a lame leg from their home in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, to a printer in Middletown, Connecticut. With the help of friends, they folded and addressed the papers. Then, with humble hearts, they earnestly prayed that the message would be received by many. James would then pack them into his carpet bag and walk back to Middletown to the post office. They wrote and published as much as time and money would allow. In 1852, they moved to Rochester, New York. With the help of their fellow believers, they purchased a printing press. The press was set in the living room and many of their employees lived in the house with them. It was the first Adventist publishing house. In 1855, James and Ellen accepted an invitation to move the publishing house to Battle Creek, Michigan. In May 1861, the Seventh-day Adventist Publishing Association was incorporated. The Lord continued to bless the publishing work and it continued to grow. From 1855 to 1881, the publishing work grew rapidly. More equipment was purchased and several buildings were built. In 1878, two of the buildings were joined together. And then in 1881, a large press room was added. As the company focused on the bottom line, workers lost sight of their Christian principles. God's warnings through Ellen White were ignored, and on December 30, 1902, the review's large building burned to the ground.
In the shadow of a great calamity, we are of good courage. We have no disposition to draw back in the face of untoward circumstances. Fire has wiped from the face of the earth the visible symbol of what has long been regarded as an object of love and veneration. But God lives and his truth endures. Uriah Smith in Review and Herald, January 6, 1903. Once again, the Lord blessed the Review and Herald, and it grew and flourished. After the fire, the Review and Herald relocated in Washington, D.C., near Tacoma Park, Maryland. In the 1890s, James and Ellen's son, James Edson, bought a press and started publishing on his riverboat. In 1901, he moved the publishing work to land in Nashville, Tennessee. In 1980, the Review and Herald and Southern Publishing merged. By the 1980s, there was not any more space to expand. In 1981, the Review and Herald purchased a farm in Hagerstown, Maryland. There was plenty of space to build and expand. Today, the Review and Herald no longer has the printing equipment, but it continues on as a publisher. It has a narrower focus and a much reduced staff. It is still God's publishing house, and we are looking forward to carrying on His publishing work, reaching and touching the lives of many more through printed and electronic formats. The books, magazines, music, art, and audiovisual materials published by the Review and Herald hold a special place in all our lives. Together with our fellow Adventist publishing houses, Advances in Technology, the White Estate, and General Conference Departments, the Review and Herald will continue to fulfill the mission and send out streams of light around the world. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it.